Good evening, this is News.ph, but it's not politics as usual. I'm Pia Ontiveros. Tonight, News.ph returns to the senatorial campaign trail. We have two candidates with us, Tingting Kowanko of the United Nationalist Alliance and attorney Marvin Yasos of the Ang Kapatiran Party. Good evening, ma'am. And Hi, good evening. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you for being us. here, ma'am. And attorney Yasos, good evening. Good evening. Ma'am, let's start with you. How exasperating can it be to always be asked uh, the questions about what does it mean to be a pretty face? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've been asked that many times, you know. Yeah. And, um, you know, perhaps that's really, in a way, why mm -hmm. I decided to go to school mm -hmm. and have uh, two master's degrees. Just One, two, not three, no? Not two. Two master's. Yes. Okay. Uh, in, in, and two uh, doctorates. Yes, but my, a minor in theology, major in Philippine history, and the other one is the National Defense College of the Philippines, right? Mm. And then, um, since I took eight years of public safety, um, it, it could lead me to a master's degree, but it has not yet led me there mm. because I think okay. I should spend another so few, a, a few months, no? Mm -hmm. um, and then I have a doctorate degree in Philippine history and criminology. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought that, well, you know, like, some are just pretty, but you wonder what's really in their brains, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so I've but of course, it's not just because you're pretty, then. Yeah, it means maybe that something. you're not. Yeah, oh, oh. you're not smart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so I thought this is going to help. Aside from like, if if anything happens to the family, at least I can be a teacher. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. but you said to go to school, you decided to go to school, but you you married yes. at the age of eighteen. You yes. had not yet been to college no well, just, but just one year school. college a oh, one year college yes okay so i finished my college degree and i majored in oriental history uh-huh yeah. how many years after getting married um uh, actually my daughter was degree. already going to college and my classmates were her classmates uh-huh uh -huh. okay All so right. pretty long mm -hmm. yeah. okay maybe 15 yeah 15 years mm -hmm. but at least you finished Yes, yes. Attorney yes. Yasos, uh, you are a consecrated secular Dominican. Yes, Can you yes. explain that to us? That's why you have an OP. Yes, Actually, that's right. OP meaning? Order of preachers. Okay. Some would say out of place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. But secular uh, Dominican, so you are not a priest, but you are a lay priest. minister, so you can give communion. Actually, uh, when you say consecrated person, you have vows mm -hmm. of uh, chastity, poverty, and obedience. It's that. It's just Same that. Same vows as the priest. Yeah, right? yeah, but oh. uh, we are not ordained. You no, know? mm -hmm. we are lay person, so we uh, live out our vows outside. Um, in our secular world, yes. not inside our convents. Okay. So this is like one step beyond being a lay minister, as I had mentioned. Um, you know, this is not just giving communion. Yeah, yeah. Actually, it's more on um, giving witness to the values of the gospel in the secular society. Mm -hmm. um, it's not uh, the type of a uh, service like the lay ministers do. Mm -hmm. It's more on doing apostolate. Mm -hmm. Okay. And USD. Dominican. We're both yeah, USD. USD. Oh, oh, oh. Both of us. And you'll yes. have more in common, you'll discover. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, yeah. But um and and uh UST uh because that's where you is that where you took law? Uh, I studied I? from UP but the University of Santo Tomas is owned by the Order of Preachers. Mm -hmm. So uh I get to visit it often. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is what I meant, ma'am. You'll discover what you have in common. Uh -huh. Your father, uh, attorney Lasos, Wilson had testified uh, during the Agrava fact-finding uh, board. Uh, board no? Yes. Um, and well, for a generation of viewers who are not familiar with this, of course, the, the, that board was headed by Justice uh, Corazon Agrava. Agrava. They investigated the Aquino Galman double murder case. What did your father testify about? Actually, I have a very hazy uh, knowledge about what he testified about because I didn't grow with my father. Yes. But, uh, and you were just, what, eight years eight old? Eight years at old the time, at the, the time, yes. And uh, I was trying to pour over the records, you know, but I found out that he was able to testify that uh, Galman was mm. not the. Yeah, wait. He was a uh, security guard of yes, yes, China Orlando. Airlines. Yes, yes. On the right. tarmac. On the tarmac. Stationed on the tarmac. Mm. Okay. Actually, he was just that transferred to that shift on that particular day. Mm, it was not his okay. normal shift, so that was something that was really unusual. Yes, okay, and he testified to what? Um, he testified that um, Galman's body was thrown, I think, somewhere from the van, mm -hmm. and then he was riddled with uh, firearms. Already and then dead. Already dead. Okay. So it was not true as the conspiracy theory was saying that it was Galman who killed Ninoy. Mm -hmm. And it, it wasn't was even him. true that 
Galman shot Ninoy first, and then the soldiers shot him. That's what the conspirators would like to, to say. They had uh -huh. already killed him already. Okay. And he also saw, but he saw, but he did not see the shooting of uh, Senator Aquino uh, on the yes. steps of the plane. Yes, uh, he was not in that position to mm -hmm. see because I think the angle was, uh, was impossible for him to see. But uh, at least he was able to shatter the mm -hmm. theory of the dictatorship that it was Galman who shot mm -hmm. Ninoy. Okay, and of course that resulted in... Uh, that resulted in his incarceration for six months. Um, mm -hmm. There was a time when I was young that uh, I couldn't see my father. Uh, we were frantic looking for him. And uh, until such time that we approached a relative who happened to be in the military mm -hmm. who helped us uh, locate my father. He Where was did you in, find him? He was in Camp Krami at that time, ostensibly for safekeeping. Ah, That's what safekeeping. the term the dictatorship used. Uh -huh, okay. And the probe itself resulted in several indictments. In yes, case. yes. And uh, eventually uh, the conviction of those who are implicated. But not the mastermind. Did your father ever speak to you about it when you were much older? Actually, uh, I never had the chance to extensively discuss this. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, he died early. Yeah, yeah, he died early. When was that? Uh, in 1992. And as I, I said, see. I didn't grow up with my father. He had his other family. Ah, I see. Okay. Um, uh, governor, come on. I should, I should call you Governor. Because <laughs> that's your last... Uh, 92 to 98, right? Yes, Interlock. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, Saba. Uh, do you think it was as simple as people were just putting two and two together? No? Um, when Boy Saikon, who you are associated with because you were both in the Council of Philippine Affairs or COPA, another thing that maybe this generation is not familiar yeah. with, no? um, when Boy Saikon shows up at the Kiram residence, yes. and then people think, oh, it's got Peping Kohanko's fingerprints uh -huh. all over it. No? Is that how uh, you were accused of conspiracy? Maybe, but we really don't know yeah. um, how it happened. But um, I was never a member of COPA mm -hmm. because I your, was your working husband. for the government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was working for President Gloria. Yes. But Peping was uh, part of COPA, and I really don't know how it happened. But um, uh, Peping texted uh, Noi Noi and said, we don't understand what's happening. And Noi Noi answered that, Never was there any report that mm -hmm. him nor, nor me were included as conspirators. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so it must have been exasperating again if I have to use the word. You have to be told, ma'am, sabi ka nang again. Yeah. But many agree that this should have been all. Uh, this should all have been handled uh, better. But what I'd like to ask you is, were the Kirams correct in sending their uh, so-called royal army to Saba to claim it? The, the Kirams had said to me, it was the Sultan that said, that his brother had gone there in his desire to live mm -hmm. in Saba mm -hmm. because they consider it theirs. He only had 27 high-powered um, weapons, mm -hmm. yes, and uh, 22 sidearms. Mm -hmm. So that's very little for somebody who wants to invade the country. Mm -hmm. So the Muslims are considered like to always carry their guns for protection, especially when you go in the high seas, mm -hmm. you need the protection for any piracy that might occur. Mm -hmm. So okay. to carry very little firearms actually is, is, is normal. Actually, it's, it's even more ordinary when they carry more uh, sophisticated mm -hmm. firearms. Mm -hmm. So he said, that's it. He just did it because his brother wanted to go there. Mm -hmm. But would you have advised them, if you had had the chance, no, to uh, withdraw or to leave Saba? Oh, his brother? Yes. To, to withdraw or to leave Saba? Yes. Would you have advised them to do that? No. No. You would have no. advised them to stay put? Yes. Really? Because? I'm a bit of a revolutionary. <laughs> yeah. My, my, my grandparents were like that. My two grandfathers were one was a general, one financed the Kabiti mutiny. Mm -hmm. I would have made him stay, mm -hmm. given the chance, because, mm -hmm. he's, because it's considered theirs. Okay. Yeah. And okay. so if, if he were there really to fight and not, and not to, to want to live permanently, then by all means, knowing the Tao Sogs, they will never surrender. Mm -hmm. It is their culture to continue fighting to the death. Mm -hmm. Okay. It must have been painful for you to hear uh, the ARMM described as a, and we're going back a few months uh -huh. before this, no, described as a failed experiment. But at the same time, it, yeah. it must have been 
uh, good for you to hear also when uh, the Bang Samora uh, uh, draft agreement was signed. Right? Yeah. Yes. It was never a failed experiment. And it was actually conceived during Cory's time. And it mm. took the delegates a very long time to decide on the Organic Act. It's very well written because I translated it in easier um, to understand language mm -hmm. with Judge Kadir Indar. It was published by Datu Pax Mangunda Dato. So it hasn't even been implemented and already mm -hmm. it's going to be changed. Mm -hmm. So it's wonderful that there's this Bang Samoro uh, MILF agreement because in 1987, I was the first one who suggested such an agreement and mm -hmm. we met in Maguindanao, Simway Crossing, my husband, um, Secretary Pimentel, and, uh, and Pimentel, the yes, yeah, he right? signed it together mm -hmm. with Abul Liliaya and um, and Muhammad Pasigan, who were actually advisors of Kagi Murad mm -hmm. and Salamat. And mm -hmm. we met and they signed that peace agreement. And during Cory's time, there was relatively peace be between the MI, so mm -hmm. that if they needed anything, it was I that was used as an intermediary. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you're saying that um, the, the Organic Act was not fully implemented. Yeah. Whose fault was that? Um, well, it could be that they needed the guidance because it's always been customary that whomever the president wants to put there mm -hmm. is the one who is elected. Mm -hmm. And so even till today, I was hoping that the Muslims would be given a chance to choose their own leader and not mm -hmm. because the president says, I want this man to be the, the head of the autonomous region, no? mm -hmm. that he will be elected to that position. Mm -hmm. Attorney Marvel Yasus, one of your advocacies is to strengthen state universities yes. and colleges, and you say you want fiscal autonomy mm -hmm. for them. What does that mean in light of what had just happened in UP Manila? Yeah, actually, um, there are only two universities, state universities, that have fiscal autonomy, the Mindanao State University mm -hmm. and the University of the Philippines. I want the other state universities and colleges to have the same uh, privilege so that they will have to determine how to use uh, their money with mm -hmm. least interference or no interference at all from the national government. Okay. And the funds that they have at the end of the fiscal year would not have to revert to the national coffers. Mm -hmm, okay. So that's what I have in mind. Yeah. But what does that mean when we talk about socialized tuition? Because that's what UP has now. Are you saying that let, let's have socialized tuition? No, for all I, the I'm not saying that. No, you're talking about? I'm talking about uh, giving the state universities the free hand on how to uh, allot their resources based mm -hmm. on the budget. Um, for me, the socialized uh, tuition um, scheme um, is a failure and in fact, that's what drove Cristel uh, Tejada to her, uh, to her suicide. Mm -hmm. And um, this started at the time of UP President Angara. He was the one who introduced it. Mm -hmm. And, um, and um, a lot of uh, concerns have been raised against the STFAP already. Yeah. Well, the SUC's budget had been increased considerably uh, mm -hmm. in the last year. Mm -hmm. And yet, we have uh, a situation like this where UP has Etongan's STFAP. No? What, what do we do? Should we be uh, aligning the, the budget for the SUCs to specific uh, concerns like student tuition, for example? Uh, I, think, um, I think there should be um, uh, that earmarking to specific uh, concerns so that uh, this will not be uh, transferred no, to other uh, areas mm -hmm. of the needs of the university so that um, it will be used on a focused basis. So mm -hmm. that will deter juggling of funds from one project to the next. Okay, we'll have to take a short break. Uh, News.ph yeah. will be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching News.ph on the Solar News Channel. I'm Pia Ontiveros. This is Meeting the Avance, a News.ph candidate series. We have uh, Tingting Kowank of the, of the UNA, 
and Attorney Marvel Yasos of Ang Kapatiran. Attorney Yasos, you were also um, you were executive assistant mm -hmm. and uh, legal consultant at the Department of Agrarian Agrarian Reform. Reform. To who? Who was the secretary at the time? Uh, at the time, it was Horacio Boy Morales, ah, no, Boy under Morales. ERAP. It was very funny because I joined the EDSA DOS rally. After mm -hmm. ERAP was booted out of office, I turned out that I was booted out of office as well. <laughs> ah, okay. And that was a surprise. And that was a surprise. <laughs> Wait, how long were you at DAR? <laughs> uh, I think I was there for around two or three years. Okay. I it was, was Boy even... Morales himself who brought you in? Uh, actually, no, but mm -hmm. uh, someone close to him. I was assigned to the DARAB. The Darab adjudication board. Darab adjudication board. Yes. Oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> ito, may hacienda Lucy. <laughs> but, but anyway, in, in a while. But, okay. But you are for an mm. extension of CARPER. Mm. Because I think there's still a million um, lands that have yet to a be million, acquired. A million hectares, hectares. of uh, land that, that uh, have yet to be acquired and distributed to the farmers. And mm. um, I think that uh, one last extension for CARP is, uh, is a must. Uh -huh. Because it's supposed to end in 2014, 14. So next you, year. You are aiming for what? For at How least months? another five-year extension. Okay, even the, if Hill de los Reyes says that even if it ends in, in 2014, as long as we've sent out notices of coverages to the landowner, notices of coverage, sorry, to the landowners, it, it doesn't matter. It will still go on. Um, actually, um, what will be uh, what will not go on is the land acquisition and distribution but uh, how naman sila ngayon, eh. <laughs> yeah, yun nga po. Oh. but uh, how effective will the dar be if the program has already been terminated by 2014 mm -hmm. you know there's already demoralization in the department of agrarian reform because you know if you are an employee you are thinking of where where you go to next. work afterwards mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because there will be streamlining and downsizing of the bureaucracy uh -huh, okay so it but your concern is not just about what happens to the, to the employees no but mm -hmm. about what is it about the program that that you think needs um, that extension time of five years I think uh, land acquisition and distribution land. okay uh, and although even if the carper will not be extended I think um, the DAR will have to continue to function because there are still cases that mm -hmm. need uh, to be resolved, no? Mm -hmm. So the Darab will still be there. And of course, the giving of support services to the beneficiaries and the farmers will have to continue. Mm -hmm. You know, I that, don't, that, yes. you know, I think it's not a matter of just this land distribution because, because many offices believe that if you give the land, then the farmers will be all right. It's wrong. It should be a comprehensive agrarian reform, mm -hmm. you know, where you really have to help the farmers you know, with their fertilizer, water, you know, the irrigation. It's not, you know, seedlings. Mm -hmm. You just don't leave them alone. Mm -hmm. But the trouble here in the Philippines is that they're left alone. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. why there's a need to uh, really um, implement and reinforce what we call as the support services. Right. That's what uh, Governor Kohanko is talking about. Right. Oh, para hindi basta uh -oh. mabalik uh -oh. sa landowner yes. or napupunta sa ibang or uh -oh. or ibebenta nila or sa ibebenta. landowner. Yeah. Yeah. Did you study that uh, attorney um, Yasos? Actually, how much of the land that had mm. been given out had been sold to other people? Actually, In other words, I asked mm. that because you know there is that thinking that not all the farmers who till the land and who receive mm. it no, as beneficiaries uh, really till the land afterwards. They, they yeah. turn right around and sell. And sell. Right? Actually, um, there's a provision in the law that you cannot sell, you cannot alienate the land if you are a beneficiary. But they do that indirectly. Sometimes, yes. you know, um, they do not um, pay the, the amortization in the land bank, the land so bank. Uh -oh. that gets foreclosed. Or sometimes they alienate it informally, you know, without mm -hmm. the proper documentation. So it's very hard to monitor mm -hmm. the statistics, really. Actually, but they can that's be a concern. made. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay, ma'am. Actually, they can be made into a greater reform villages. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or say like, co-ops. No? Like, co yes. Uh -oh. and, and say like if Luisita were divided, because you have 10,000 recipients, but only six are registered in the DAR, actually. Yeah because mm -hmm. the rest are shareholders, then how do you give them 4,000 hectares? They're not even going to get one hectare. But if you form them into organic form villages like they do in Israel, in the kibbutz, mm -hmm. where they've got the cows, they have the, the, the processing for the cheese, and the, and the villagers really work there themselves. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, like milking the cow and then making the cheese. You know, after the processing, and then they sell them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is what you mean by support services. But in 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 the Philippine scenario, 
Of course, that's not what happens. Ma'am, about Hacienda Lucita, mm -hmm. um, which, which was, is, yeah, was, <laughs> was yeah. slash is yes, owned yes. by your husband's family. Yes. So you've said that uh, they stopped <coughs> planting in 2004. Yes, yes. And that since then, uh, 6,000 uh, farmers and their families have had nothing. No? But, yes, nothing. Um, how best do you think can we resolve this? The DAR is right now in the process of distributing or about to distribute. Uh -huh. How do you see this uh, ending in a, you know, in a we're win -win just, situation for actually, everyone? Actually, we're just watching because since it's already in the hands of the court, it, but if we were to be like part of it, maybe um, we would form them into a bread and reform villages because mm -hmm. when you get less than one hectare, I mean, what can you what plant? What is that? Oh, there goes yeah. your food production. It's, it's like the problem is that they might plant cabote, sayote, and then the next one will plant watermelon and peanuts, you know, and, and they're really going to be on their own. And then they go to Sari Sari stores along the way, and, and it's mm -hmm. not going to be an orchestrated um, production of what the family really needs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, a cause for concern also uh, in uh, agrarian reform? Mm -hmm. kung na, na Actually, sometimes it results to fragmentation of land holdings that, mm -hmm. that are even less economical. But I think what is important here is that we respect the autonomy of the farmers if they are already the beneficiaries. Mm -hmm. But still, that concern can be addressed by the Department of Agrarian Reform providing them the proper advice, uh, the proper resources in mm -hmm. order for them to really transform their land holdings into economically viable ones. Mm -hmm. okay. But they should have the money for it. Somebody's got to help them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? Well, speaking of money, how much does the Kowanko family? <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I set a ceiling for my expenses in the campaign. So uh -huh. over that, you know, I, I don't know how I'd get it back. So we're, we're not spending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Attorney Liasos on uh, same-sex marriage, mm -hmm. it's interesting how you put things. No? And, Please correct me if I'm wrong. You've said that things can be as simple as, and then I paraphrase, uh, uh, one partner executing a will, uh, or, no. or last will or testament, uh, so that the, the other partner becomes an mm. heir. The heir? Actually, um, I mentioned that in the light of the, there are certain groups in the LGBT community who are advocating for same-sex marriage so that they can protect the proprietary relations of the partners. Uh, my view is that you don't even have to go into enactment of a law to provide that. Under mm -hmm. existing laws, you can already uh, protect the proprietary relations. For example, you can enter into partnerships. Mm -hmm. Okay, So you are partners in a business. Mm -hmm. So normally, you have the sharing component there. But it's a okay. pretense, or, but you actually uh, live together, right? Yeah. Uh, or uh, if uh, you want to bequeath, mm -hmm. no? Um, then you can put it in your last will and testament. Mm -hmm. Okay, so business partnership or making the other partner the heir. The heir. And, and, and therefore, you don't need uh, marriage. Um, yes, if that is the only uh, concern. Yeah. Governor Kawanko? No, you don't need marriage because mm -hmm. it's, marriage is, is for procreation. Uh -huh. <laughs> but anybody can inherit whatever you want to leave behind. No? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but whether you live together, same sex or not. So I don't see any reason on why there should be marriages mm -hmm. that don't result in what God wants, which is procreation. Mm -hmm. Actually, I share the same view of Governor Kohanko mm -hmm. in that regard. Okay. Uh, on the RH law, as a member of Anka Patiran, Attorney Liasos, um, and if elected, you said you will work for the repeal of the law at most or at best perform oversight functions on its budget. Yes. Right? Um, actually, that's the law already and it's a party stand that we are against it. So, of course, it's expected of us normally to file a bill for the repeal, but uh, I'm more concerned with the implementation of the law as it is now, and I will use my oversight function so that no funds will be wasted along the mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So I think that will be my paramount concern. In okay, that no funds will be wasted, meaning uh, if the funds are meant to, to procure certain mm, yes. uh, uh, contraceptive... Um, yeah. And okay, lang sa as law as because it's in the law already. Okay, uh, okay. What I'm trying to say is, if they are saying that there must be, you know, fair treatment of natural family planning and uh, mm -hmm. and artificial means, then at least um, we will see to it that it is implemented the mm -hmm. way it is intended by the law. Second, um, there's a very big funding component. I don't want the funds, no, the gargantuan amount, to be wasted, mm -hmm. no, that. 
that might be pocketed by DOH officials in the procurement of contraceptives abroad. Mm -hmm. Okay, how would you read the um, uh, Supreme Court status quo anti-order on the implementation of the law? I am delighted that the Supreme Court has voted first to issue a status quo anti-order with a 10-5 uh, vote mm -hmm. and uh, it also uh, denied the motion for reconsideration of your sister, Risa. My older um, sister. Your older sister. <laughs> Risa, um, recently by a vote of I think 10 for 1. Mm. So we are hopeful that in the final analysis, the voting will be as the stand. You think the voting today. will reflect that um, in the end? I am, I am confident, you know, because uh, mm. um, it's very hard to, to convince the judges to look the other way. And, mm -hmm. and the voting as it is now is really very lapsided, mm -hmm. you know, 10 for mm -hmm. in favor of the petition. Yeah. Um, Governor Kowanko, very briefly, if elected, what would you do about the RH law? I'm really for the Magna Carta of women. Mm -hmm. I think the two should be harmonized, or maybe one shouldn't have been there than the other. Okay. But the Magna Carta already protects the women's health, mm -hmm. and it says okay. also in Section 17, according to religious convictions, and that mm -hmm. the couple can decide, you know? Yeah. Okay. So, so I didn't see the need for the RH bill. Oh, but it's there. Uh, well, it's, at least... Uh, yes, yes, you know, it's there. So. so so um, it, it's too late to harmonize them too, but maybe mm -hmm. not too late, and maybe okay. it can be done. Okay, yeah, harmonize in, meaning repeal in the, repeal the RH law. Put, just put no. them together, because sometimes mm -hmm. there are okay. laws that are just the same, mm -hmm. but not implemented. Actually, 80% of the reproductive health law is lifted from the Magna Carta. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh -huh. ma'am, we'll end with this. Uh, tell us the story of how you and Peping ended up uh, on the other side, <laughs> with Una yeah. and not with uh, your nephew-in-law, no? It all started with the Noi Nidiga Party to Correct, run for that's in right, that's right. We did your research well, huh? <laughs> yeah, This was in 1978 when Inoy didn't have a party and the Liberal Party boycotted the elections at, of that uh, 78 uh, assembly, um, assemblyman position in Manila. Mm -hmm. So the 18 candidates of Ninoy lost and Peping had formed a party called Laban mm -hmm. with um, George B. Nai who was the lawyer of Cory in, mm -hmm. in, in, in Ninoy, that mm -hmm. election. And of course, it had Rene Segisag and Monchi Mitra, mm -hmm. um, and Ding Roses, you know, the stalwarts then mm -hmm. yeah, for, for democracy. So we never changed party at all. Mm -hmm. and, and because um, we, we're, we're not really opposition in that sense, you know, but um, we, we were thinking that if there was another co who's running with George Bina, they need to show the people that we're still for Ninoy. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, Noi Noi. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, final words, like you have 10 seconds each. Uh, let's start with Attorney Liasos. Um, I want to use this opportunity to remind the Filipino public that we do have a choice in the forthcoming May 13, 2013 election. If you are not satisfied with the people in UNA or in Liberal Party, you can at least try to look at Kapatiran. And one of the candidates is Attorney Marwilliasos, number 20 on your ballot. Thank you, Attorney Liasos. Governor Kowango? Yeah, well, peace and safety is what I can really give you know, mm -hmm. to, to, to the country, in having um, national security and, uh, and public safety studies. And I think that it all begins with the mother. Um, it, it's how the mother takes care of her children and to make them respectful and good citizens. And if they need jobs, you know, and uh, and education, then Ting Ting Kawanko is there to help them. Um, so, pagkat ako pa isang, uh, isang walis lang, you know, isang Ting Ting, ngunit kung sama-sama kami mga ina, uh, pwede ko tayo magtrabaho, magkakasama para sa edukasyon sa ng inyong mga anak. At we have a big, big, fat, big kiss na walis Ting Ting to clean, you know, whatever is necessary. I, I, I think the, the, the slogan of Noy Noy about Matuwid, I would like to add, malinis and tahimik. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maraming salamat. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Attorney Marvel thank you. Thank you. And it's Governor our pleasure. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very yes. much for being thank here, ma'am. And thank you for being with us. I'm Pia Ontiveros. This is News.ph. See you again next Wednesday. Good night.